Good afternoon. My name is Joel Gittleson, and I'm a professor in the Global Obesity Prevention Center at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. I'm going to present to you a brief description of a simulation model that we developed to model the potential impact of the urban agriculture or urban farm tax credit bill that is currently in consideration. And the title of my talk is Predicted Impact of Property Tax Credits for Urban Agriculture. Decentralizing food distribution to local food outlets can reduce obesity and risk for diet-related chronic disease. The Baltimore City Food Environment Model is a simulation model designed by the Global Obesity Prevention Center to determine the potential outcomes of certain food policies in low-income Baltimore neighborhoods. This map covers partial areas of districts 9, 7, 11, 12, 13, and 14. How did we develop this particular model? This involved a multi-stage process, but included talking to people at the City Health Department, the Department of Planning, we talked to urban farmers and community members in the city of Baltimore. We also used the latest scientific information on associations between food availability, what people eat, and their risk for obesity. We used real maps of Baltimore City. We used information that told us where different food sources are located, and we used actual data from real children here in the city of Baltimore. The model includes actual data from 200 adolescents age 10 to 14 from Baltimore City. It includes information about their gender, their age, their height, and their weight. It includes actual geolocated destinations, including 57 schools, 313 corner stores and carryouts, and seven recreation centers. And it includes algorithms that help us to describe the decisions that children make based on what these children actually told us about their usage of food sources and the foods they select within these stores. This video clip shows the different components of the agent-based model that we developed. It's divided into several main areas. The central area in the upper left is a picture of a part of Baltimore City and actually shows a representation of children moving around their food environment and making choices of different types of food sources. It also presents below that a series of levers that you can change to modify the behavior of these kids. So for example, we developed levers that showed what happens when you increase or decrease the number of urban farms in the city of Baltimore. And it shows the impact of these changes on food choice and on obesity status among these children. So this table presents a couple of different scenarios of the potential impact of the tax credit after five years. Assuming a 2% conversion rate of vacant lots to urban farms per year, we see that there would be an increase in the number of urban farms by three to a total of eight urban farms and a reduction in the total number of vacant lots that are privately owned from 30 to 27. And this is associated with increases in the variety of fruits and vegetables available at corner stores and carryouts, and an increase in the consumption of fruits and vegetables among adolescents in terms of total servings. If we look at a higher rate of conversion of 4% per year, we see that these numbers increase further. This slide presents the preliminary results in a little bit more detail. Assuming a 2% conversion rate per year, we predict a decrease in the number of vacant lots by about 10% from 30 to 27. We predict, using the model, an increase in the number of urban farms by 60% from 5 to 8. The model predicts an increase in the availability of fresh fruits and vegetables in corner stores and carryouts by close to 50%. We also predict an increase in the consumption of fresh fruits and vegetables by children by about a third. This slide shows a slightly more optimistic scenario assuming a 4% conversion rate per year, in which case the model predicts a decrease in the number of vacant lots by about 20% from 30 to 24, an increase in the number of urban farms by 120% from 5 to 11. In this simulation, we expect to see an increase in the availability of fresh fruits and vegetables in corner stores and carryouts by over 100%, and an increase of consumption of fresh fruits and vegetables by about 86%, which is more than half a serving of fruits and vegetables. There is a fact sheet that has been distributed along with this video clip, which presents a series of assumptions for how we 
made these decisions and how different components of the model were rationalized. Future versions of the model can incorporate overweight and obesity predictions. I'd just like to say that I am really excited about this bill and thank you very much for taking the time to review these materials. Please contact me if you have additional questions.